Folks, take a look at the big board here. We are now down about 650, well, call it 661 at the moment, uh, down nearly 2%, but the NASDAQ nosediving 3% at the moment, 2.7%. These numbers are moving all over the place. Here's the intraday of the Dow Jones Industrials. We are just off session lows. Same with the NASDAQ. S&P, I, I mean, you know, down 96 points at the moment, 96 points. Viacom CBS, we've got to get to this, officially retiring its old ticker today as and to, for its new ticker, Para, and a new name, Paramount Global, debuting on the NASDAQ. Paramount saying it wants to shift away from traditional television and movies to, wait for it, streaming. Para, which suffered a 17% cut yesterday on an earnings miss, is down just under 1% today. But can the new name erase the problem of a crowded battlefield in the streaming wars? Here in a Fox Business exclusive, Light Shed Ventures partner, Rich Greenfield. Rich, um, we got a meltdown at this hour, so it's not surprising to see a lot of these stocks down anyway. But how do you view the, the name change for Viacom CBS to Paramount and what it can do or won't do for the stock? I mean, look, it really goes back. Liz, thanks for having me. It goes back to Sherry Redstone, right? Or actually, it goes back to Sumner Redstone. If you remember the immortal words of Sumner was content is king. And I think Sherry Redstone has very much carried on that tradition. I think in, in Sherry's view and now Backish's view, Bob Backish, who is CEO of the company, they've been really big believers that content is what matters. And I think if you're looking at the streaming services, it's undeniable what drives Netflix, what drives Disney, what drives Apple TV Plus are, is content. And so leaning into the Paramount brand name, Viacom CBS, they never meant anything to anyone, literally ever, really. Whereas Paramount has really been their content engine. I think it makes a tremendous amount of sense. The question, though, for investors, though, is everyone is now investing more. Peacock's investing more. Netflix, Disney, Hulu. Everyone is throwing more money. Pixar movie, you know, the former head of Pixar, John Lasseter, is now making movies for Apple TV Plus through Skydance. Like, there is so much content that investors are panicking that this is not going to be a very good business for quite some time. And they're really questioning whether any of these companies can be big enough to really win. I want to ask you this, and then we get to Fubo, because uh, you've changed your call on it, but you haven't changed your messaging. Quickly on Paramount, do you see it as a target for another bigger company to swallow? I mean, look, there is no doubt that scale matters. When you look at the size of Disney at $300 billion, when you look at Netflix, when you look at sort of, Amazon. I mean, forget about those companies. Yeah, that's what I was going to get at, Liz. Like, we're talking about, you know, companies like Apple and Amazon can throw more cash and are building. I mean, look, think about what Amazon's going to do. In September, Amazon's going to have both Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the prequel television series, and Thursday Night Football moving from linear television only to Amazon. And so the fear is, even if these companies are investing in good content today, they need far greater scale. And I think that would be said whether we we're talking NBC Universal, Lionsgate, Viacom, CBS, or now Paramount, everyone is looking and going, consolidation seems necessary. I think the challenge is, and I think the reason the stock was down yesterday, is I think investors are, are there were some investors that were hoping that Paramount might get sold, that there might be an opportunity to sell Paramount. When you rename the company Paramount. Not happening. This is, quarter, it's quarter of their strategy. It, it's not, it, I mean, right. we didn't think it was going to happen, but this has cemented that it's not happening. Well, yeah, and, and they're ordering the new stationery, so you know, forget it. Um, I do just want to say it's, Paramount exactly. market cap, $17 billion. $17 billion is chump change for Amazon or Apple. Moving on to Fubo, you really dislike this no. company. You shorted it from the high 50s all the way down to where it is now. I'm looking at $9.71. You changed from, a, I believe, a sell to a neutral. What do we infer from that? Yeah, look, I think there are certain times where, you know, our price target, I think, was 650 on the stock, and it had gotten down towards $8 when we went to neutral. But, you know, it's all, you know, it's, it, everything we look at is what is the optionality, what's the opportunity risk-reward at, at each price level. I think the reality is Fubo's got a very fundamentally flawed business. And I think, Liz, you, you actually just highlighted the reason to be short Fubo, you know, functionally, is that more and more content is moving to streaming. Viacom is telling you, Paramount, sorry, I should keep saying Viacom. Paramount is telling you the future <laughs> is in streaming. 
NBC Universal saying Peacock's the future. Disney saying it's not ABC and ESPN, it's Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. So as more and more content leaves the bundle and is on all of these streaming services, not to mention Apple and Amazon and Netflix, people are not going to subscribe at the same level. And forget, even if they subscribe, the amount of time they spend watching these services is going down. Less and less linear TV viewership is really problematic for, for Fubo because Fubo doesn't make money on their subscription. Like when you subscribe to Fubo, they don't make money. They make all their money in advertising. So if less people watch linear TV, that's less money for Fubo to make on linear TV. That's the crux of the short story. Plus they're going into sports betting, which is highly competitive, where they have no scale or balance sheet. And so it, right. it's Talk a long-term very, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, the, the real problem, honestly, Liz, their biggest problem in the future that I think investors haven't really focused on is that they need to raise more capital. And as you're pointing out with the current market choppiness and the challenges of the debt markets, I think Fubo has no access to capital. Yeah, you know, we're, we're now off the lows of the session. The Dow is down 590 after being down about 629. These are very difficult times for even the best of investors to navigate. And when I think about your call on Spotify, where right before Spotify came out with, with its numbers and then, of course, the whole Joe Rogan drama, you had a buy and I believe a pretty significantly high price target of what, what was it, 280? You know, you're one of the greatest analysts. You've made these calls. How can people invest when even the best of the best like you are unable to kind of navigate this and see what's going on? Look, there's no doubt that we don't make stock calls for a day or for a week. We make one-year calls, and, and we have a firm thesis. I mean, you, your example of Fubo was we were patient. It went against us, and you had the the, the CEO was on uh, on your air, uh, sort of attacking us. The, the reality is, we're going to be patient. I have a lot of faith in Daniel Ek, and I think what's interesting about streaming music, unlike streaming video, is the competitive landscape. Sure, Apple's there. Sure, there is, you, you have companies like YouTube with YouTube Music, but the competitive dynamic is very different. The, 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 by far, the, the leader in the space is Spotify. They've really grown and starting to dominate um, building out the podcast space and building it all into one experience in a way that Apple and others have not done. This is one where we have a lot of conviction that Spotify is building up its power in the audio space. And the real reason to get excited is that they're really leaning hard into advertising. And that's gonna open up a far greater global opportunity for music than they've had before. It's basically been a subscription story. And what we really are excited about is the advertising story. It's not a three week story, it's not a four month story. Over the next 12 months, you're gonna to start to see the power of advertising. And I don't think there's a better stock to step into right now than Spotify. Well, uh, again, great point about longer term versus just moment by moment. Rich Greenfield, thank you very much for joining us. Rich of Lightshed. And by the way, we are heading back down. We're lower by about 610 points. Folks, we are now for the major indices negative for the week. We're watching this very closely. We do have a 2.5% drop for the Russell 2000, so small caps are getting swept down in this downdraft. The NASDAQ down 2.6% or 373 points. S&P down nearly 90.